Hey, how do you do there? Well, here we are again in the shop fixing things. Um, I guess that's what you do in the shop. But uh, so this project is our one of our dump trucks. We ended up with a transmission issue. Um, it was getting stuck in uh, between reverse and low gear. Um, it felt like it was going in and out with the shifter. When you move the shifter, it would you could feel the detents going in and out of first. Not first, low gear. It's low gear and reverse. If I'm going to say first, I mean low gear. So it would bump in and out. So I took the tower off top of the transmission, just kind of wondering if it was uh, the, the shift lever in there skipping across the shift forks. That looked fine. So then I pulled the top of the cover off the transmission to look at the shift forks. Um, I don't know where that's at, right over here. So here's the shift forks. Um, I couldn't see anything wrong with those shift forks. Everything looked fine. So then I thought, well, we're gonna have to pull the transmission. I think it's down in there. I, I, I could play with, once that, once I pulled that, that uh, top plate off with the shift forks on it, I could get in there and I could play with the gears and reverse was fine, but when I would move low gear and first gear, um, I could move those gears and get them to bind up uh, the slip clutch between reverse and low gear. Both those gears would engage and the engine would lock, or the transmission was totally locked up. It wouldn't move. You couldn't get the truck to move. The truck would stall out. So I thought, okay, we're going to have to just pull the transmission and look into it. So we pulled the transmission um, and uh, started asking around because I've never played with uh, one of these uh, transmissions. It's an Eaton Fuller RT7608LL. A lot of people call them an 8LL transmission. So pulled the, uh, of course it's got a wet kit on it because of the, the dump truck. So pulled that off, that's still on the truck, pulled the transmission out. So I kind of got that, I have the transmission disassembled. So the, the bell housing, uh, the bell housing on this end is off. Um, the auxiliary um, is right here. That's hanging on the forklift. So this would be the, from the high side to low side when you're switching. And then this one also has the uh, deep reduction gear on it in the transmission for that extra low gear. Um, so what I found was um, the, the main shaft uh, is right in here. Uh, reverse, is, um, reverse is right along the wall here and then it's low gear. Um, I can move those back and forth. They run on this gear and this gear and you could get them to bind right up. So under, when, I, when we disassembled it, this is uh, the main shaft and um, I kind of have all the gears laid out there. And these spacer, this is what I found right here. I, I saw this little piece laying in the bottom of the transmission. Um, these spacers right here, and then there's another one down here, um, all the way through here, you have these spacers. And those uh, lock on to the shaft here. And then there's a, a small keyway that lines those up. So when they drop down onto the shaft, they go down on there ever so slightly. They get to the spot and then they just rotate. Just It's not a quarter turn or anything, but they rotate over the groove to keep it in place. And then this keyway here uh, keeps, them in, keeps them in the spot and it also keeps those gears from wandering back and forth. So that was my problem. Why it was getting stuck in reverse and low gear was this was broken and was allowing first gear, no, low gear and first gear to slide down the shaft and um, um, get stuck into two gears. Um, this is the clutch. They call that a sliding clutch. So that engages, that drops in there like that. And that's what's gonna engage your main shaft to the, out, to the output shaft. So there's, there's uh, three sliding clutches on that, on that main shaft, these guys right here. Um, uh, under the inspections, this one right here 
um, is actually cracked right here. The whole gear, I, I doubt the phone's gonna pick it up, but you can see a crack all the way across. Um, you can kind of see a chip out of it right there at my thumb. And then the other side here, uh, right there at the tip, you can just see a crack. So um, I'm gonna have to get new parts, obviously. <laughs> so I'm hoping just to kind of rebuild this transmission. Uh, a few new uh, sliding clutches. Um, I, d I think the gears look fine. The only one would be um, uh, on the auxiliary. Um, this inner gear here uh, looks like it's been ground a little bit. So there, there's a synchronizer right here. And uh, that synchronizer get, needs to get replaced. So when you're shifting from the low side to the high side and you hear a grind, when, you, when it goes through, it's that synchronizer, uh, the fibers off of that, that, that will sync up the two sides. So I'm gonna replace that, that synchronizer in there, um, get a new piece of that. The rest of the auxiliary looks fine. Um, and then this is where that auxiliary goes into. Those gears are, those gears are really rough and you can see there's a bevel to them right there. Those are supposed, they're not squared off, but they're not supposed to be uh, beveled at an angle like that. So, um, gotta get that. I'm gonna get, re get a new gear there. And then that, the shaft is actually twisted um, ever so slightly when you look down that, when you look down the shaft, it's just twisted. Um, don't know if that shaft uh, twisted prior to this and caused that caused that retaining ring to break, or if we twisted that shaft when the truck got locked in the gear because we did work it pretty hard a couple times. Um, didn't know what was going on and it just everything's bound up in there. So um, yeah, we'll see once. Just got to get some parts ordered and then uh, we'll shoot some uh, video on, on the assembly. Um, don't get me confused with somebody that knows what they're doing. <laughs> because I've never done one of these transmissions, never had one apart. I've been asking a bunch of people around the area if uh, anybody's got any help and no, everybody says, no, we just pull them out and put new ones in. So I don't know, we're, we'll figure it out one way or the other. So uh, we'll see how it goes. There's just a lot of pieces to get all back and put back together and uh, there's something about timing like you got to have these gears timed and I don't know if it's on the auxiliary some of you guys watching are gonna be like what an idiot of course you know you got to have it timed and know how to do it I don't we'll learn so I don't know if it's on the uh, the counter the counter gears here I, I don't. anyway we'll see so this small keyway here keeps that inner gear in place that doesn't move that's what would keep this gear and this gear in their place. That's what broke before. So then you can see this slide clutch can go back and forth. So you gotta pull that out and keep all those keyways all lined up on the assembly of this uh, main shaft. But then uh, you gotta pull that shaft out each time you slip a new gear on. Okay, I got the, the counter shaft and the main shaft in there now. To put that main shaft in, you do have to keep the bearings off of that uh, counter shaft, that upper one, and move it all the way over to the side wall to get that down in there and you can get it down in there. Uh, the other thing is, is on your timing marks, make sure you get it on that second, uh, that second gear, not this first one here, because that one can move. So all these others will be lined up, but get it on that second, that second one. Get your timing marks lined up. Now uh, it should it should roll freely like this. I did get it assembled the first time, and it was very tight. And what had happened is I didn't have the correct clearance between um, 
these two gears here, it was very tight. You just got to have five thousandths clearance. And they were tight, and that was binding up, and it, everything rolled, but it, it rolled really tight. And then uh, this sliding clutch was bound up, and uh, I couldn't get anything into gear. So I guess on the assembly, just make sure all these sliding clutches are working right. Uh, going back and forth and will engage into every gear, but it should roll very easily Okay on to the auxiliary um, We have to pull this shift fork off in order to get the synchronizer out here um, We're gonna have to pull the counter shafts out on each side so those back gears there can uh, come off um, So in order to get that shift fork out, we got to pull this uh, the back of the cylinder off and then there's a nut on the inside of that so we can pull that pull that out pull that out get the fork out okay when you get those counter shafts out the synchronizer will just slide right off and Definitely has had some heat there. And uh, you know, it doesn't look too terribly bad, but comparing it to the, the new one here, those grooves are a lot deeper. And this one here is pretty much smooth. And same way this, the outer ring there looks pretty good too, um, closer to this one. But this, obviously the new one's in better shape, right? <laughs> All right, we're going to reassemble that. Okay, I got the auxiliary mounted back on there. Um, I want to just kind of, want to make sure everything's working, right? You can just kind of spin this. This thing's going to spin very freely. Then you can lock in a gear by sliding one of those slip clutches. You can see down on the end, that thing starts rotating. Just kind of go through all the gears and... Everything seems to check out. So that makes me pretty happy. So uh, that's all I'm gonna show. All I gotta do is do the installation of the truck, but that should be pretty well straightforward. So um, yeah, that was pretty fun. Uh, the hardest part to that was putting the, that main shaft in there in between the counter shafts. Big thing is put the bottom shaft in, put the top counter shaft all the way against the wall and you can get that main shaft put in. That was probably the hardest part to get in. Um, I will say I am not going to do another one of these, at least until Brian brings his over. I think that's a Mac, Mac transmission maybe. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but until next time, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. It's not really uh, entertainment, more educational. Um, I hope it's educational. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you subscribe. Adios.